Welcome back everybody to Blender as a Video Editor Part 3, uh, Blender 3.0 specifically, also Part 3. We're going to talk all about transitioning your videos and some of the effects you can do. That's that's the main focus of this particular video. So hopefully you've seen the first, at least the first episode to know about this whole setup and interface and how we got to this with the video. And that's all in episode one. So go check that out if you're not even sure how to get to this phase because I've already got all that set up here. And what I've got here is about an hour and 30 minute long, uh, just magic, uh, the gathering arena match. It doesn't, that doesn't really matter. It's just that uh, it's a video that I can example some transitions with. So of course we have a video file and a sound file. We're just going to look for a good point to maybe make a transition. And here looks like a pretty good one. So usually you want to transition to the beginning of matches for these type of videos, I would say. So let's go ahead and make a cut right here now. Since we're going to transition here, maybe we'll do a fade, maybe we'll do a wipe. We'll decide that in a minute, but we need to get the right kind of cut. And we can either do a soft cut or a hard cut. Now it doesn't actually matter a whole lot what you do, you just have to be aware of the limitations. We covered a ton of that in basically the first two episodes as well. Uh, for this case, we're gonna be doing soft cuts. So I just pressed K, and if you go over here to the bottom left, you see you get a soft or hard. Uh, I'm gonna keep it soft. Now the only thing, the only difference is, if you do a hard cut, you can't pull this back over. That's really the only difference with with a soft cut like we have here. We've got a little leeway of uh, space, which might be useful in these transitions. So I'm going to find a point here where it looks like it goes into a lull, LOL, which is about right, about right here. So a very short period, and I'm just going to hit another soft cut. So this little period in between is not what we want. But actually, it looks like I cut it a little too soon, just a tiny bit too soon. So I'm zooming way in here with the mouse wheel and scrolling over. So it looks like I actually want the cut to be about right here. So I'm going to hold control after grabbing those two ends, you know, control, click the ends, hit G, hit control again, and it snaps uh, to different parts. So it's snapping there looks good. Uh, we actually want this one to be a little bit longer there. That's what we wanted. So we want that to be right to the end of where we're, we were deck building there. See right there, boom. And then it kind of fades out naturally with how the video is. So yeah, about that frame is pretty good. Oh, we actually got it too soon now. So actually right there is really good. And this whole section right here is useless. We don't want it. It's just this, right? No good. Don't need that in a video. So I'm just going to hit the delete key. So control Z, just undo it. If you make a mistake, I just selected the box, delete. And there we go. Now we've got our section. We want to go from here to here and we want to do it in a nice smooth transition style. So what we're going to do is, well, we could do an L cut or a J cut. Now I'm not like a video editing whiz and I don't know all the theory. I didn't go to school for it. I'm a computer scientist. So uh, whether you do an L cut or a J cut is up to you. I'm just going to show you how to do them. Uh, not necessarily the best thing. So oh, I better explain this too. So you can, if you have your cursor somewhere on the left, everything on the right is what's upcoming. And if you Hover your cursor in this area, the sequencer area, and press backspace. It removes a gap. So that's really handy when you're going along and editing to just remove gaps. So we want maybe the pre-audio of the next one uh, going like this. I guess this would be a J cut. So since we did soft cuts, I can just pull this over. I don't know how much to do. Uh, I think they usually say like two seconds or something. Uh, so we're going to look up here on the timeline. It looks like it's splitting right there at about 1835. There's 1834, there's 1833. So we'll just pull it back to somewhere around here. All right, very good. And what we want to do is take, uh, I don't know if this is a problem. I'm probably saying this terminology wrong, so don't quote me or correct me, or do correct me in the comments if you want. It's fine. We're going to get rid of this particular audio and just pull it back like that. And now we have this empty space of audio. Well, it's not empty. It's it's this new audio that we're going to transition to. So this probably actually wouldn't look bad as just a sharp boop ready, but we can do one better. So let's take this clip here and pull it back in. Uh, maybe about there. We don't want to do it the full sound length, I don't think. 
And then to crossfade these, you got to click them both. So you, use, you need shift for this. You click the first one, hold shift, hold shift, and then click the other one. And now you got them both selected. And when you have them both selected, uh, you can, there's a couple ways to do this. You can go to add, transition. And you can do a cross, a gamma cross, or a wipe. And they're all something different. You can also just, I think, you right click. Yeah. You can right click up here and get it, or right click in here. And you'll also get options to like add transition. So there are multiple ways. I think you can like even command, is it command shift A, control shift A? I don't know. No, it's a, just shift A. Like with shift A, you can get a menu too. So there's three different ways to get this menu, which might just make it more confusing. So once you have these two clips selected, I guess you can just use a box shift instead of select. And I am over explaining on purpose. So just to make sure it sticks. So you can either go to add transition, right click, add transition, shift A, add transition. There's just tons of ways to get to add transition. It's just the way Blender is, the way they designed it. They want to give you workflow options or something. I don't know what their design decision is for that. Kind of weird if you ask me. I'll, I would say just leave it in a menu and give me a hotkey. You know, that's my preference, but they just want to like give you tons of ways. So now that we have both these selected, let's pick one of those ways of clicking add transition and we're going to do a wipe. Now it crosses just do like a cross fade, which is kind of cool. It's fine. You know, just, you know, fade one in or fade one out, fade the other one in. The wipe is where you get something sweet. So once you add it, you get this new area here that is your process of, of the thing. You can like click your thing into it and see what it's looking like. See, it's got this, uh, you can see it's cross fading up like so. That's kind of cool, or down, I guess, actually. And if you click this little wipe, you get the uh, specifications over, over here, properties, I guess you would call it. There's transition type. We got single right now. You can change it to double and you see what that'll look like. So you can play around with these and uh, go to your heart's content with what you want it to look like. You can do a nice iris effect. That's pretty cool. I really like this actually. I think that's probably ideal for this type of thing. It's like perfect. Just right into the ready. I like it. Uh, so we're going to stick with iris. There's also clock. You can imagine what that does. There's direction in and out, which you can imagine what that does. Uh, yeah, that might actually be cooler. I don't know, I kind of like the out because it shows the ready in this particular case, but that's just my preference. All right, and then blur width is for these little edges. Uh, you can change it as desired, make it look a little more dreamy or whatever. I kind of like it right about there, actually. I think that's kind of cool. That's a huge blur width. <laughs> it's really huge. And uh, you'll see some more stuff. And to be honest, I never ever mess with these and fades. Uh, you can if you want. You can see what kind of cool effects you can get with transform, crop, video, color, and stuff. But it's just not something I typically do because uh, the simple fade like this is like plenty good for what, for what I'm doing here. I don't even know what this would do. What would this do? Apparently, it's cropping the whole wipe area. I'm just, I'm just out of curiosity. Okay, so I guess if you want to do some sort of special, you know, that doesn't really work here in my opinion. But there, there's always cases where you want to do this stuff, so it's nice to have the options available. And that right there is the main way you do a transition. So we're going to do a little demo render of this. So I'm going to click here, make it a start point. And I'm going to go over here a little past it and make it an end point. And now you can see that this area is a lighter gray. And if we go to render, we will get a result that we can observe of course you want to work through your whole video doing all these and then render the whole thing but if you just want to sample what one section looks like and maybe hitting play on this is like too laggy or too slow which is now i just hit play and it still hasn't played uh probably because i'm recording to the same drive i'm pulling this data off of so it's like uh, it takes a lot of caching for a drive to do all that so that's probably my reason but anyway in any case we're going to go up here to render and render animation now of course, before you do this, if you haven't seen the first couple episodes, I talk all about how to render properly, uh, mainly in the first video. So I've already got all that stuff set up and that's why we can just go to render, render animation and let it do its thing. And I'll come back with the results. All right, so I got it rendered and it turns out I had this looping in the background. So you guys probably heard it over and over. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, 
I also realized when I was rendering that this isn't really a good endpoint because it just ends like right here. So, you know, maybe there's a case to to say it's better to cut over here or something. You know, like right here. And do that. And that's easy. We just make a soft cut, delete this, and when we delete it, its uh, transition goes away there because it doesn't know what to do with it anymore. And we go something like this, pull it back, uh, create a little overlap here like we did before, and just redo it. Right? That's all we got to do. Put another transition in there. Wipe. We chose Iris out with around a 0.5. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like now. We're just going further in the video, closer to the, the match start in this particular game. And that looks, that's probably better, right? So let's render that one. Uh, pause. We're going to go with slightly different numbers. Just go a little further out there. And render, render animation. This actually happens quite quick since it's a small part, but uh, I'll come back with the results. We'll watch both videos here in a moment. There's the verses, yeah. Uh, okay, I guess I don't need to pause. It's already done. Already done rendering. That's the end of the render. And to find those, of course, you go to where your output was, and we chose our rendered folder. So uh, we're just going to go there in our file explorer on our computer. And we'll see it right here with these, these names. And let's just give these a quick watch to see how they rendered in the final trend. Oh, got it on my other screen. Here we go. There, this is the second one. Or no, this is the first transition. And as you can see, it renders in that blur. Decent little transition there, right? Let's check the other one. We effectively did about the same thing, just whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, the way I have the audio on this one, I don't like, actually. So I would change that the way I tried to do the a J cut, or what I'm calling a J cut. I don't know if it's a proper one. I guess it's not too bad, but I would probably tweak that a little bit more personally, or maybe just leave it. Uh, if you're not like a full time editor, sometimes you just got to get the stuff done quickly and it's a little janky and it's whatever. At least you put some edit in, into it. But uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. So that's it. That's the video. That's how you do transitions. I mean, if you have any questions, you can also crossfade sounds in a very similar way. I guess I'll throw that in at the end. You just select them both, go to transition or crossfade sounds is right here instead of the transition. Normally you see transition right there, I think. I don't know. Wait. I'm not seeing it. Here we go. Oh, they got to overlap. So they would have to, we could do that. We could say, all right, let's just do this. Transition sound crossfade. Now, I don't know what the difference is between that sound crossfade. I'm bringing that one up with shift A. It's the same when you find in this ad. If you right click, you get this crossfade sounds option. And I don't know what the difference is there, but it looks like it just auto keyframes in. Let me get this zoomed in. You can see here the fade in and the fade out. So it looks like it just kind of automatically does that. And we can take a quick listen here and it's without rendering. It's kind of lagging there. Maybe we'll let it replay once to. And it still seems a little awkward to me, but it's not bad. So you can see you can play around with that kind of stuff in your video. You're right in Blender, and you got a lot of control over it, a lot of custom options for how you want to do that transition. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace.